Hello friends, it's Sherry from Turquoise Dreaming. How you doing today? Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me. I'm glad you're here. I am here to work on these journals, the No Sew journals, and I've already uh, decorated the cover on this other one. I used a cheesecloth and one of the images from the digital kit. It's a really cute Victorian girl here. I thought she was so pretty and she has colors that match the blues here. And so that's why I used her. And on this one, I'm going to do a little different. I planned on using three layers in that one, on that one, but then when I came right down to it, I didn't like it. <laughs> so I used to use the two layers. So uh, if you've never used cheesecloth before, personally, I think it takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, so um, I haven't used it that much. In fact, I couldn't even just deal with it when I first started making junk journals. And I said that in a couple of my videos, I know, I said I just can't deal with it because as I've said, I'm a recovering perfectionist and you can't, you can't con completely control cheesecloth. So it's like, uh, what do I do with this, you know, stuff? How do you deal? How do you control it? So this is what I'm doing. I cut a piece that I thought would fit under my layers here. So here's one layer. That cheesecloth is one layer. Here's my, going to be my second layer. Here's going to be my third layer. Uh, let me see. I want to make sure that I've got this fabric right. So I think I'm going to cut my fabric down a little bit more. Uh, plus, I have my, you know, like I'm trying to say I'm not going for perfection, but I do want this line to be straight here. So I'm just going to cut this. And I uh, like this fabric matches this cover. I was going to use it on the other one, but it didn't really, that one came right down to it. I don't think it matched it close enough. So I just eliminated that. I'm going to cut this right here. I just want my, I don't want it to be too wide for my picture or my cheesecloth. So let me see if that's going to be good. Because I want my, plenty of my cheesecloth to be sticking out the side here. So, uh, I think I need to, let me see, let me put my picture on there again. I'm going to cut a little bit more off the side, uh, one of these sides. Let's do this one. Just to adjust. That's probably a quarter of an inch or just under to fit this little card. And this is another little Victorian lady from the digital kit. I'm just getting right down to business here so we can get as much done as possible in my allotted time. See, that looks better, doesn't it? It makes a nice frame around the picture. And then you can still see the cheesecloth here. So yeah, that's much better. So what I do to glue down my cheesecloth is I put it on. It's kind of grabbing onto this a little bit. You can see it's staying where I put it when I spread it out. And I kind of get it where I want it, you know, as far as placement uh, in the middle of the cover or whatever I'm gluing it down to. So I'm just going to get it where I want it. I think it's centered. And then I'm going to put some glue on here. So I'm using Fabri-Tac on here. So I use what seems to be working out best for the cheesecloth is to use whatever I'm putting on top of the cheesecloth to glue down the cheesecloth. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a second if that doesn't make sense. It probably does, but I'm just going to put some Fabri-Tac on the back of this. And I want this glued down pretty good, but really the edges don't even have to be glued down. Like I said, I'm going for a bit of a rustic in handmade look with these journals anyway. So that's why uh, the cheesecloth is perfect for that look. You definitely, definitely get, if you don't have a rustic look in anything else, your cheesecloth is going to give you a rustic look. So let's just put this down. I have a frayed piece part on the bottom, so I like that too on this fabric. That was just a piece that, uh, that side was ripped. Uh, I think I ripped a piece off and then cut this piece out, but I'm gonna get this in the middle pretty much and yeah let me get it straight okay before I push it down 
Okay, so I've got my glue under there. Let me pull it over just a little. I'm going to mess it up now if I don't stop trying to make it perfect. Um, but, okay. Uh, straight on the top. Okay, so now I've got it on there where I want it. I'm going to push it down and get it kind of on there. And then I'm going to also use your bone folder, your scissors, whatever you use to smooth things out. And just push your glue down through, you're pushing it down through your cheesecloth and trying to get it down onto whatever's under your cheesecloth. Whether you're using, a, you know, something like a book cover without any fabric on it or paper or upholstery like I am, you want this piece that you're putting on top of your cheesecloth to glue down your cheesecloth. <laughs> that really has, I've done it before and it works really well because I tried to glue cheesecloth and it's just like, it's got all these holes in it. So it's very hard to just try to glue on a piece of cheesecloth. And then you get your glue right where you want it because the rest of it is just going for that rustic look and you kind of let the rest of it do what it wants to do. You know what I mean? It might fold up, it might spread out, just whatever it does is, is uh, what it does and just gives you that look, I think, if you're going for a little bit more of a rustic handmade look, it gives you that look. So you can kind of feel it's all kind of Staying in place now, so you know you got that glue. I mean, you can pull on it if you want. See, it's 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 down, it's down, and it's not even dry yet, probably. So uh, my edges, like I said, I wasn't worried about my edges being glued down. I think that's fine too. I like it. I like it just the way it is. So now we're gonna put her on here, and we're gonna. I'm gonna also use Fabri Tac on her. Since um, I probably could get away with art glitter glue too, but uh, it's my cover. I want her glue down to, you know, it's paper or cardstock to fabric. So I just want her nice and glued down because, you know, just handling a cover and things and tying things around it or whatever, I want it to be nice and solid, solidly glued down. And this piece, I do want the edges to be glued down. So I'm going to put her right in the middle. And her pinks and the pinks in this fabric and the pinky type colors in my upholstery just all seem to really go well together, I think. So she looks like she's in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and push her down. And also a little bit of burnishing. You don't want to rub too hard on something like this. I don't think I'm, like I'm rubbing it, but I wouldn't want to like make a wrinkle in it or a dent or even scratch it type of thing. I don't know if that could happen, but I'm just kind of being careful. And this is pretty smooth here. And this doesn't have any kind of little seam or, or rib on it. Like some scissors seem like they might. This does not, so I feel like I'm, I'm safe okay so I think she's down there she is so we've got two covers decorated now this is how they look I think they're beautiful this is the one I did off camera and I went ahead and put the fabric inside so we've got that done and so now we're ready to put in our pages which we already figured out for this one the other one I'll do off camera these are the pages for that one Okay, so that one I'm going to put aside. I'll do that off camera and I'll show you how that turned out on my next video. But we're going to do this one together. So this is the one where we're using our, uh, let's see, I pulled out a piece already. I think it was this piece right here. I can tell it's all kind of wrinkled where I was tying a bow in my last video. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make sure that my bottoms are together here. And then I know everything is going to be together. And we already made sure we had everything where we wanted it. We made sure we had our middle piece, 
that we wanted, which was this. And then our outside front first page that went so well with our fabric. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to see how this works. I think I'm going to uh, use my, you can use a hole punch. And let's see, let me grab a couple of clips here. I think binder clips will be good on this. I'm going to put my lid on here. And so you can use a hole punch or I'm using my uh, crop dial. And I got it in my fold here. I'm going to place it where I want it as far as from top and bottom. So this is purposely we made our book cover with a little space on the top and bottom, which looks beautiful. And then I'm, I'm going to do it all together. Now you can look at vi Heather's video to see how she did it. She did a little different where she punched her paper separate from her book cover. But I'm going to try. I've never done this before with a crop a dial. So I'm, this is, I mean, I, I have not even experimented. This is a total something different for me as far as punching the holes here that we're going to put our binding through with a crop a dial. But that's one reason I'm using a crop a dial is because... I think it will go through everything. I've punched book covers with this this tool and it works really well. And I think I'm going to use this. I'm trying to think if I should use the bigger one or the smaller hole. I want to put quite a bit through the hole. So I think I'm going to use the bigger hole. And a hole punch is actually a little bit bigger than this hole. So um, I'll tell you in a second how Heather did hers, I think, if I can manage to talk to you about that in this video. But this is how I'm going to try it. And I want, to, I want this hole <laughs> to be right on my spine. So let's see how we do. And I want it to be all together. That's the easiest way for me to do it. So let's see if we can do it. Let me see if my crocodile will even get up there. I might have to do it Heather's way. It will go up there if it will go over all these papers. And I don't want to rip my papers or anything. So a good reason not to put too many papers in there. If I would have put any more in there, that probably wouldn't fit over. It's just barely getting in, in over all of this cover and pages. So I've got it in the middle of my, my papers. I want to check my spine and see if it, it looks like it's in the middle. Because that is kind of like the most important thing. And I might end up doing it. Let me see. Let me see, because I don't want I want this to come out right and perfect. <laughs> okay, I, I got it right in the middle. I think I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna punch. I know it'll go through, I just want it in the right spot. Okay, here we go. I'm going to punch. Okay, let's see if we can get it off without ripping any of our papers. See how it looks. It's going to be easy here taking it down. It looks good. It looks good. See, there it is. Awesome. <laughs> let's see how it looks on the outside. So I want to keep that all together because we're, if I can, because we're going to be putting some through there. That looks good. I like it. Okay, oh, it came out of my binder clip here. Let me put my binder clip back on so we can keep this all together. Let me get another paper clip here, too. That's longer so that it will help me hold this together. I don't want to mess up my cover, though, as far as my cheesecloth and all that. So let's get it over there. Okay. Now, everything's still in place. So my hole's still good there because you want to keep that in place so that this one comes out when you punch it to, uh, so that when you buy, you know, put your ribbon through or whatever you're binding with, it will be, everything will be together. Okay, so let's take that. I got a little piece of paper, little pieces of paper in there in my hole I need to get out from the punch. That we just punched okay so let's do this one this is pretty cool I like how this is turning out 
and how that first one went. So let's see if we can do this one the same way. Get it over the end here so that we don't tear our papers gently. Okay, got it over. Push it all, I'm pushing it all the way down as far as it'll go. And you see it's in the middle of the papers. And let me check the outside. Let me check the inside and the outside. Okay, let's see. And lining it up here on the outside too. It looks good. Okay, I'm going to go for it. It looks good. <laughs> I know I keep moving it around, right? All right, I'm going for it, guys. Going for it. Here it goes. Okay, again, gently down. Take this off. It looks wonderful. <laughs> Let me punch out, get my little, in case I need this again in the moment. I don't think I'm going to need it again right now, but maybe get my little holes out of there. Okay, put that aside. I'm going to leave my paper clip and my binder clips on here so we can put our ribbon through. I was thinking of something I want to try, and I can pull this out if I don't like it, but I was thinking of putting a piece of cord through the with the ribbon also so I can hang some beads or something on here beads or buttons or whatever so I'm going to try that and if I don't like it I can pull, just pull it out that's how this journal is made you could just pull it out if you don't like it so I'm going to get three lengths of my journal here that's one two and you could just bind it with some cord if you want I just wanted to try some ribbon because or some fabric because Heather tried did ribbon and I thought it looked so pretty so I wanted to try I don't have any sorry silk, so I'm just doing um, the fabric, like a fabric ribbon. So this I'm going to put, I'm going to tie everything on the outside because that's then I, that will let me have the extra outside where I can tie something. And I have my awl here too if I need me to help, needed to help me I, uh, poke things through. And I have my old awl. I took my other nice skinny all to Florida and I thought I put it away and I went to look for it before this video and it's not it's not where it's supposed to be so after this video I'm going to do a little cleaning up and see if I can find it because I thought I put it away okay so let's see if we can get that through there enough to pull it through here we go there's one end of the cord and this is a cord I have I have wax cord and this is just unwaxed cord that I use for you know certain things uh, beading and things uh, in my tassels so I figured it would be good for this and if I didn't use this if I didn't find a color that I liked I would have used my wax cord but I found this color and you see how I, I actually I didn't even match it to the inside I matched it to the outside but look how it matches the inside I didn't even realize it would do that that's awesome okay so I'm going to pull this and we have all this extra. I'm going to tie a knot here. I'm going to go ahead. I think I want to tie this knot at the top. I think I want to tie both knots at the top here so that I have it, the extra hanging down. I think that would look pretty on the outside. I don't want to tie. Let's see. I need to decide if I want to tie it. Let me put this one a little bit longer. See, like I said, I haven't done this before, so exactly like this, so it's an experiment for me. So this is going to help bind my pages in two, right? I have two things tying it. I'm going to tie, I think I'm going to tie a bow. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to tie a knot. If you tie a knot, you can get the knot out too. You just use a little, like I use my, if I needed to get a knot out of this cord, this type of cord or wax cord or things like that. I use my uh, awl. Usually I use my skinnier one to uh, to get a knot out because I can poke it in between the layers of the knot. Okay, let me get this. Sorry, I'm pulling it a little close to me, but I need to get this tight here before I tie it. Okay. Well, 
There we go. Okay, so I got one knot. Actually, I think I need to tie. Yeah, I just want this to help me help keep my, uh, this will help keep my pages bound tight too. And so I want this to be tight. So I'm going to tie a double knot. I didn't realize, I thought I would just be tying a bow here, but I decided, I've decided right now to tie a double knot. That just makes my pages more secure. Okay, and now I'm going to tie a little, you know, I'm going to leave this straight, I think, because I'm going to have a bow in my ribbon, my fabric ribbon. So I'm going to leave this here straight down, not tie a bow, without this take up extra. And then I can put some beads or buttons on here. And look how beautiful it matches the journal, the cover, the, uh, oh, you guys, I bet you're, you're yelling at me. <laughs> you were yelling at me because I just tied it upside down. <laughs> wow. I did not even pay attention to that. I just tied it upside down. I can't have it upside down and tie beads on it. I don't want the beads at the bottom. I want the beads at the top. <laughs> see, now you get to see me walk on fix this and uh, undo a knot with my with my awl and I'm wishing I had my skinny one right now but I don't I just have to work with this and I can also use my scissors they're kind of pointy wow cannot believe I did that now it's taking up my extra taking up time on my video you know I could just cut it off and uh, <laughs> I just don't want to take up time on my video trying to get this knot out. So I've got more cord right there. And this is kind of, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to cut it and I'll use this on something else, like some tags and stuff, so it won't be wasted. I just, I can't, I've done it, I've done it a lot. I've done it so many times, you wouldn't believe how many times I've taken knots out. But I just don't want to take time on the video. I don't want to take 15 minutes on my video trying to get a knot out, right? So let's just do another piece. I have more of this same color here. Triple. I think I'm going to leave a little bit more. Now this gives me the opportunity to leave a little bit more because I saw how that one came out right. So let's see if I can do this one right. Still together with our holes. Yay. And we'll get this through here. And hopefully we can get our ribbon through here, at least on this video, and tie off these pages. And then the binding will be done, and we can decorate the pages in the next video. All right, here's one. Sorry, you know I'm not perfect, right? <laughs> now you know. If you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> I'm sure you knew before, though. I'm going to use my scissors. Maybe that'll get, get it through there a little quicker. Yeah. that Did that work? No, it didn't go all the way through yet. There we go. It's coming. I think I did enough. Yes. Okay. All right. So where's my top? Right here. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't see that. That's so weird because I was looking back and forth. That is so weird. You guys probably saw it though. You were like, Sherry, wait. That's not right. <laughs> okay, double knot again. <laughs> but now I know what I'm doing, right? I practiced. That was practice. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to get these even. I kind of like that. That was a good experiment. Now I know how I like it. I like it even, I like it at the top, and I like it with a double knot here. So our pages are going to be tight. Let me get these scissors out of my way. Okay. Nope, double knot, not a bow. Just trying to get this knot up here tight. There we go. Okay. Double knot. Where are my strings? Okay. Well, it's way out there. I don't want it way out there. See, I'm trying to rush here because I know 
I always have that time limit looming in the background. It's kind of a pain, like I can't even go over a few minutes to finish something. I just have to stop right at the buzzer. As you know, yesterday, the last video cut me off, <laughs> even though I knew it was going to. I just kept going because I was trying to finish. Okay, there. I think I've got it tight now. Okay, pulling that first one tight. Let me pull it a different way. Pull the first one tight. I'm going to hold on to it and pull the second one tight. Sorry, I can get my hands all up in here, but I gotta get this right. Okay. And there I have some nice long strings now for beads and buttons or whatever I choose to put on there, charms. And now I can actually just take these off because it's actually tied in. And I can just do my ribbon now. So let's see if we can get that done before my buzzer goes off. Okay. Yep, it's through there. Okay, here's the ribbon. Let's do, let's go for it. Now I think I will go ahead and tie a little, put a little point here. I think Heather did that too, to help get it through the holes easier. So make it a little pointy. And that looks nice too. Gives it a nice finished look. And then we're going to, see it's pretty wobbly. So this ribbon should do the trick that we need to need it to to get it nice and solid and so I'm going to try to I think I'll make a little twist here so I can get that through like it's a string and actually my scissors would probably work really well poking this through too so let's get it through there see if we can get it through there Ooh, a little piece is coming out. Good. Okay, one try. Got it through the bottom. I kind of want to turn it so that my fabric is uh, on the right side, you know, the, the front side facing up here. So we have that pretty side up inside here in our journal. Okay, I'm going to twist this again. That worked really well. And get my hole. Let's see, it's trying to get unlined up here. Where is my hole? Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Got two lights on in here, but I had to close my blinds because the sun was shining. This morning and the sun was shining through the window very, very brightly. There we go, right through. Okay, let me see if I can pull my scissors out without pulling my fabric out. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pull that tight. And you want it tight so that you're also holding your fabric in, I mean your pages in with this fabric ribbon or whatever else you're using. Okay, and I want, again, I want to tie it at the top, so I'm going to pull it, pull it through so that it's even at the top here. So let's see how it is. I'm not planning on putting anything on this. That's why I, it looks pretty even. Uh, I think I need a little bit more pulled up here. Okay. That should do it. Oops, I'm getting my little pieces up here. Okay, now I'm going to tie a nice neat bow here and see how that looks. This is our pieces that are hanging down for buttons and bows, buttons and charms and beads. Okay, so I'm going to tie a nice bow here. Again, pulling it tight. Before I tie my bow, I'm going to check the inside and see how it's doing. Oh yeah, that's getting nice and tight now. That's cool. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's getting nice and tight. Everything's looking good. Okay. <laughs> Just check in. Okay. 
See, I've never done this, this exact binding before, so it's like, I didn't know how it was going to be. Okay, it is nice and tight. I really pull my, uh oh, there's my bow, there's my bell. So let's just see if we can tie this. If um, it cuts me off, I'm going to say goodbye and happy crafting right now. And just tie a nice neat bow here for you while uh, this video runs out. There we go. I got it nice and neat the way I like to tie bows. So everything's, all my fabric is facing up. And I'll turn this around a little bit maybe. And this is how it looks. Okay. I can make that bow smaller or bigger. Or I could um, do whatever. But I think it looks really pretty like that. You can see the, the ribbon kind of makes a trim here on the journal. Isn't it pretty? Here's the back. I'm still going to put some lace here. We'll do that in the next video. And here's the inside middle, just so you can see. I'm going to end it and see you next time. Happy crafting.